Being stupid, waiting. <laughs> awesome! Hi, <laughs> welcome to Family Showdown. I thought you were doing the whole song. You're like, I, I love the intro. <laughs> Obviously, Hunter, Rebecca, insane. It's all good. We are going to talk about Feld games. We kind of like Feld a little bit. Talk about them a lot. So we're like, why not do a top ten about Stefan Feld? Throw out some game info about Stefan Feld. Just Feld Fest. Welcome to Feld Fest. <laughs> Feel the love. Yes, Feld is far and away, in my opinion, at least my favorite designer. Mm hmm. Um, so, yes, this, this list is probably our most asked about list of any requests that we get is Feld. Because this song ever end? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you're the one running this thing. So. When I, when I first got into Feld, because I heard it all, all the hubbub about, oh, Feld's amazing, Feld, 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 Feld. I did Just a like lot that. of research, and there is some really mixed opinions about his games. Yeah. You look at one list. Oh, it's a fan on the computer. You look at one list, and the and one, per, one person will say, this is the most amazing game, this is far and away his best game. And then you look at another person's list, and it's like 15th on their list. And then the next person comes along and says, I hate these games, I love these games, and then the that next person is the opposite. So, and then there's Tom Vassell who's like, Feld, man. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. And there is a lot of people that just despise Feld because uh, they claim the games have no theme. <gasps> so, Shame on them. So, to add to the confusion, <laughs> we're, we're going to give her <laughs> our two cents to this. <laughs> so... We have played, just to give you some level setting here, okay, okay. we've played 14 different Feld games. So there will be a lot of crossover on our list. So just be prepared for lots of, it's turn number six, it's my number four. Well, it's so mostly just an opening to talk about Feld games. Correct, like, Really, correct. overall. I mean, eventually we'll actually do a larger, when we've played more of them, we'll do a redo our Feld top ten. To, okay. to, to stave off some... some Complaints. Uh oh. Here's some of the ones quickly that we have not played. Oh, okay. So we have not played Roma or Roma Two. Ooh. Name of the Rose, the Pillars of the Earth, the two-player game. Uh, I that's that's a Feld game. Yes. Really. Builder's Duel is a Feld. Uh, there's a game called It's Happens. There's the car, uh, Castles of Burgundy card game. We oh yeah, played. I want to play that one too. Uh, there's a game called Strasbourg or Strasbourg. One, one Strasbourg. Of those, something like that. And then there's one that I can't pronounce, the Speecherstad, something like oh, that. Oh, it sounds German. I probably won't be able to help um, you. So those are the big name games that we have not played. Wow, there's a bunch of them. Yeah. So, and sadly, just about every one of those are out of print, except for the card, Castle of card game. And we haven't played. It will happen. And we, have, we, we, we haven't played Roman Pirates, which is on our shelf of shame currently. Oh, yeah. So. But we're pretty sure it's not going to make our top 10, we're guessing. I don't think, yeah, we didn't try to rush it in because I don't think we were, we're like looking list. at it. We're like, mm, compared to the others, hmm. unless it surprises us. All right, so there is the level setting, and anything you wish to add before we? Yes, go on? if I ever get to go to Germany, I want to meet Feld and totally fangirl out and have him sign all our games. Yeah, that's like one of our. Uh, <laughs> if we ever get to go to Essen, that's one of our bucket lists is to track the guy down and sign our games and like. Do, sign, do, do, sign the t-shirt. We'll bring our t-shirts. Do the we're not worthy thing to him. <laughs> he probably gets that all the time. 
Yeah, because I really, I really, I really to kind of explain why I enjoy Feld so much is that um, he takes mechanics and mi- makes them, mixes them up in a unique way. Almost all of his games features multiple mechanics. Yeah. It's not just one mechanic. It's lots that you have to kind of figure out what works together and how it flows together, and it's presented in unique ways. Some of his games have dice. Some of his games have cards. Some of his games have just generic trading things that they're all it seems like every game although there is some some things that kind of flow throughout the games but each one seems to be a new a new way of presenting things so i, I just really enjoy it and they're all very puzzly they're very you're trying to maximize your efficiency when you're playing the game so it's just something that really appeals to me um even though people claim they're themeless there's a lot of things that I, a lot of the things that i themes i find interesting like roman and and Chinese and every one of them seems to be a lot of them are based on different cultures. Greek. So um, I find that interesting. So as what's well. Aquasphere then? Futuristic space thing. Space ocean. Thing? Space ocean, not space, but futuristic <laughs> robots and stuff. <laughs> I guess I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is interesting. All right. No, no. So welcome to those that have joined. I assume everything's working. The sounds working and oh, they would have. They would have. They would have done um, all caps. We can't hear you. <laughs> so, should we get to it? Well, yeah. And we are going to, uh, the reason, there's two reasons all the felds were I pulled. wanted to build a fort. Were pulled off the shelf. Two reasons. One, if we if we are interested, we could pull one up and kind of show you stuff if we want to do that. But the main reason is I kind of had them in order back here of my favorite Cheater. to least favorite. Cheater. That's changed. I've done my top 100 list. There has been a change in the order a little bit, but... If we left them back here, you would basically know my order. So if you get an if you get an old old uh, if you get an old uh, video real quick and look it up, you could probably get my top ten basically off of that video. Stalker. So, <laughs> Feld. Let's do this. You're supposed to go this way. Oh. Feld. The way you read. Oh, sorry. I'm... Feld. <laughs> <laughs> what is your number anyway. ten? Let's do this. My number ten. You didn't get out, did you? Where is it? Oh, you hit it in the front. I, t- I told you there's a lot of Feld games. Yeah, there's a lot of Feld games. All right, all right. My number 10, I'll dig it out here. You don't have to show the game for everyone. Oh, okay, fine. Come on, IT. Bring I'm ready when you are. My number 10 is Bora Bora. And it's my number 10 because the art is what attracted me first to this, and it blew me away. I love the art in this game. It's beautiful. In fact, I probably will pull this out so you can see it because it's pretty cool. But, um, this one I think is probably one of the least clear of his games. Like, as far as when we talk about rules and stuff, it took us a little while for it to click. And I don't know, it seemed like because the art is so beautiful, but it's all similar colors and designs that I think it's easy to get them kind of confused what is going where. Wouldn't you agree with that when you're yeah, and in that one, it seems. Yeah, just to make this easier, the num- Bor Bor is my number ten as well. So, Rockon. So, yes, my, my I wrote a note next to it, and I wrote more rules than I, gameplay I get out of it. Yeah. Like yeah. some of the other games that we'll it's mention later have a lot of rules as well, but I seem to get more out of it. This one just seems like it's a lot of churn for not a lot of. Yeah, give not back. necessarily a lot of game, but it's absolutely. I just. The, the colors that they used for this, and I can actually show you now because our camera's so much better. I just love the color scheme they picked. It's beautiful. Um, let me see. I'll show you a fraction of the board. I'm not going to pull the whole board out, but you can kind of get an idea of the colors. The whole thing's like this. And all the pieces, like the little harvests and things like that, they're beautiful. They're bright pieces. They're all colored. Even the, the different players... It's just really, really pretty. It's got lots of the different bright blues. It's got a very tropical feel to it. It's got the gorgeous... Um, I can't think of all of a sudden the name of those flowers. Um, but it's a really beautiful game. And it's a typical Feld salad festival of figuring out what's going on. But like he said, you do... A- this one seems to have more than most when it comes to put this here to get this and this and this. But you add this combo and you get this, right. but then you have to trade this in for that. And When you're first learning it, this is not one I would ever start with. Ever. Right. And ever. The, and everything about this game, I should love it more than I do. Because it's dice. 
Yeah. The dice are workers. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things going along. It's, it's very much building up an engine and deciding paths. I think what what I, I guess I don't know if I liked or not liked about it is mm-hmm. that it seems like every round you're building to buy some cards, and some, some tiles, I think, at the end of the round. Mm-hmm. And if you don't get the right combination of things, you don't get to buy those tiles and you can fall behind. So, yeah. It, it, and this one is one, every time we pull it out, we have to completely... I have to read the reread the rules, relearn it because it's not it's not really intuitive. It's not where you can just jump back in the game. Right. Yeah, it doesn't feel like you're like, oh, we haven't played this in a while, but let's just pull it out and play it. This is not one of those. This is probably a heavier feld, and it's it is it's deceptive looking because it's it looks really beautiful, but then you're like, wait a minute, those shells, but there's shells on this other thing too. Are these the same? You know, yeah. it just it can get really confusing. So yeah, you have to go through the rules. Um, this is not one I would recommend for a um, unseasoned felled player. <laughs> like, yeah, it's one, I think it's one of the heavier ones in my it opinion, is. And, and 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 it's heavy. Like I said, just because it's not intuitive, you wouldn't. It doesn't think. Well, if I do the dice, I'll do this, and this plays off of that. It's more. It's very. It tends to be a little convoluted on how things work. It's not. Um, yeah. But it makes up for it by being gorgeous. It, yeah, you're staring gorgeous. at beautiful pictures while you're staring in confusion. <laughs> at least you're enjoying yourself because it is really pretty. It's probably, honestly, yeah, without doubt, it is the prettiest one. Yep. I think I, it is. I agree with it's that. gorgeous. It's there. I'm chucking it on the floor. What are you going to do? Here. I'm just kidding. I'm yeah, we actually, it's it. not a bad idea to move them off. As yeah. We, as we but, both But then I can't them. build my fort. And, if, yeah, and I'm, I, like I said, it's my number 10, so we're straight to her number 9 now. Woohoo! Oh, see, I'm doing all this work. <laughs> all right, the next one is also. Wouldn't it be funny if we have like a complete crossover, like a hundred percent crossover? I don't think that'll happen. No, it's not. Actually, I'm pretty sure that'll never happen. <laughs> but right. that would be interesting. So what's your number nine? I'd probably go jump in the canal. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> my number nine is another bright game, and that is La Isla. We have gone now from one of the heaviest felds to one of the lightest ones. And that's, I think, the appeal to this one. This one is a little bit different. Um, Actually, it's a lot different. The board is set up for you and everything, but it's got little critters all over it. And I just, I love the way this plays. Let me see if I can pop it out real quick. Because the goal of the game is you're getting victory points and stuff by uh, moving up the the little animal tracks. You want to try to get victory points, and the more you've walked up the path of whatever animals animal animals you have chosen you're going to get victory points but once people get up to a certain level it triggers the end of the game so you have you're only going to get to a certain point before it starts to trigger because these points add up very fast especially if people are going after multiple animals so it just depends each game is going to play a little differently depending on if you're going after one or more animals for one thing and it's positional so on the board you've got like triangulated little critters there'll be a critter at each one and you're placing people and it's kind of a I don't want to say area control, but it kind of is. You it have to is. place people there to trap them, basically. More like area influence. Once yeah, you... area influence. That's good. And it's really, it's another one of those really pretty games. It's very brightly colored. The animals are cute. Well, for the most part, I guess there's a... Well, some people like... There's bugs. Weird bug things. The frogs. Yeah. Frogs are cute. Go to birds. I like the fact, too, that they've got these action cards mm-hmm. that... Um, Multi-use. They're, yeah, they're multi-purpose. And yeah. again, so you're choosing it and you're like... Ooh, I could really use that benefit. Ooh, but I really could use another cube because you have colored cubes that do different things too. Right. So you're trying to do, you know, you're making these choices about your cards. And it's another one of those games where there's a lot of good choices. There's really not yeah. a bad choice in there. It's not, oh, I'm choosing between something rotten and something really good. It's all good stuff. It's just what's going to be your best path to victory. So I really like this one. One of the best things about it, this would be a great feld to jump into. I don't think it takes that long to figure out how to play this one. Yeah, It's really pretty, and it's got a lot of different pieces. You have little dudes. You've got little animals. You have cute little animal tiles. You've got cubes. You've got multi-purpose cards you're playing with. It's got lots of toys to play with. I I love it. So, there yeah, you go. Yeah, it's, it's probably, of the ones we have, I think it's probably the lightest, but it's still lower mid-weight, I would say, game. Because you have mm-hmm. multi-use oh, yeah. cards, and there's a lot, there's, a, there's quite a bit going on for a fairly light Feld Yeah, but game. if you're ready to start playing a Feld game, this would be one I would say start start with this one. It's one of the cheaper ones, too. Yeah, yeah hey. <laughs> so that way, too, if you decide you hate Feld, you didn't spend as much, right? But it's, I think it's fun. I really like it. And I, it's, this is one that we can actually pretty much jump right back in, even if we haven't played it in a while. 
and figure out how to play it really fast because it is that much lighter. Yeah, this is super light. So that is La Isla. So what's your number nine? My number nine. La Isla? No. <laughs> it's too light for her. It is too light for me. <laughs> is this on your top ten then? I can move this. Do, do, do I need to? Do I need, no, do I need, uh, you were spoiling my list here. Everyone knows they can probably chant it's it. My, right it's now. my number fourteen out of fourteen. Uh huh. Wow. <laughs> fourteen out of fourteen, folks. Ridiculous. My number nine. Ooh. Is a Rialto, which is top of the stack over there. There you go. This is a newer game for us. We've only played this once, and fairly recently. Um, one of the few games we played in September. <laughs> September was the month of sickness and school starting and crazy work and all sorts of things. So we didn't play a lot of games. But this is one that we did play, and I really, really enjoyed it. This is one that could, I think, go up my list with more plays. Ooh. I like the card drafting of it. I like the area control, too. Two things I like in games, area control and card drafting. Um, it just... I don't know, it just it didn't seem to... It, everything was smooth, everything worked well, everything made sense, it was easy to learn, but it just didn't give me that, ooh, that's really cool. I didn't really get that, ooh, that's really cool feeling from it. That's the only thing it's really lacking, is nothing really blew me away. It reminds me a lot of uh, other Feld games. It, yeah. Uh, it's an older one, which makes sense. That he that's probably built, why, he yeah. would have built off of this game, but older being... Four or five years ago. But. Whoa, that's so so four <laughs> years ago. Um, so old. Yeah, I, I just really enjoy it. I like the I like it. You're basically in uh, what is it, Venice, and you're building uh, uh, bridges and between areas of the city and, and or using your or, or doing gondolas and and uh, it's the the bottom line is you're making buildings that give you points and you're getting area control and there's two real those are the two main paths to victory is making lots of buildings. Or control on the board. Yeah, of course, you could do do one or the uh, focus on one or the other. Or do a much mixture of both. I think you focused in on buildings when we played, <laughs> and I did a little bit of both, and I ended up winning barely. You thought you were destroyed, but I barely beat you at, uh, with it. So. Hey, I really don't feel like I can weigh in on this game. Why? <laughs> because I was so sick and full of like yeah, you were Dayquil were... <laughs> or Nyquil. I might have even been Nyquil at that point because it was in the <laughs> evening, and you're like, we're playing a game, and. Yeah, I I was really loopy when I played that game. But I want to yeah. play it again before. I, I basically put it as my 11 because I couldn't. I was like, mm, I'm not sure I remember all the details about that. Yeah, I really enjoy it because I think this is one that, like, uh, similar to Castles Burgundy, we could pull it off and, and learn it pretty quick and play it. Yeah. And yet there's a lot of cho good choices to make with it. So Yeah. Like I said, so this is one play of this, so it, it has the potential to go up. I don't think it would go down. I think it would only go up. So there it is, my number nine, a Rialto. Yeah, and I spoiled it. You can put it down because I said it's 11 for me, basically. All right, that's pretty interesting. Interesting. All right, my number eight goes dark. Dark like the moon. As in Luna. He's looking at his list, people. Do I need to not say much? No, you go ahead. Be on somebody else's no, list. No, you go ahead. <laughs> um, the theme for this one, I was kind of like, meh. And this is one of the few that I was like, I don't know that I felt the theme as much. Maybe I just didn't jive with it. I don't know. But I liked the way the mechanisms worked. I liked that you have this monk dude that's moving around. And based off of him is how the actions go. And what he you know, opens up or whatever for right. you. And that's different than, I don't think he does that really with a lot of the others where you have something, somebody kind of guiding what you can do and what you can't do. And so I, I enjoyed that because it was so different. That's why. Yeah. There's, there's a, uh, there's kind of cool. I just made it like a mirror. <laughs> so yeah, the, the, this game, the, like she said, there's, there's two things going on with it. The, the box, back the box backwards. The, um, you basically there's there's uh, there's a main city here that you're doing th actions in that you're trying mm -hmm. to influence, but then there's also all these islands that are around the city yeah. that you're trying to get area control on, and you get uh, special um, 
benefits for having controls of different areas. Mm -hmm. But there's one dude that's going around the island, and you don't want to when 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 he get lands on your island, you got to abandon ship and get off of it. It's so funny too because bad things happen. Right, and so, so you're like, ah, get out of here! And it, but it's not always easy to leave either. No, so, sometimes you just have to. <laughs> You know, suck it up and take some negatives because you just can't get all your people. Get away. And then there's also this dude that's tromping along here that's kind of the, the deciding how long the game's going to last. That's the one I like too. Is it is I think um, it's the it, it's the castle guard. Yeah, the guard guy. I think yeah, it's the guard. I don't know. I know there's a couple. Yeah, there's a couple things going on with him too because there's something to do with the points. I can't remember now the detail, but there's something with the points with him. Yeah, where he's at, you get certain points for doing. Things. And the, just like the the bad guy, there's a, there's a, a priestess, which is the symbol of the game. The, the first, Luna chick. The Luna. Uh, uh, she travels around and if she's on your island you get benefits. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of, it's area control but you can't kind of sit on your laurels and, and take control of an area because you might have to bail out or, or, try, yeah, or try to move people to where the, the benefits are going to be, right? And you do need to plan ahead in that one because I got excited because um, we played very differently. You tended to put like all your eggs in a basket and like take these huge benefits, and but you'd have like this mass exodus. Right. And I scattered. Right. And it was a little easier for me to move around. So sometimes I, I think I actually did win this one, didn't I? I think so, yeah. And it's interesting though because both of us could have easily, they were both viable options. I did better in the city, and you did better on the islands. On the islands, yeah. and that ended up being what clinched it for me. But it's really neat. I, I just like that there's so much different going on in the different choices, and the fact that you're on your toes constantly with this one because you're like oh just like you said you can't rest on your laurels once you figure out oh i got this really great engine going with this oh and and then the, the guy and, comes and, and the bad guy and the good guy lady the, good, the bad guy and the good lady yeah uh travel in a specific pattern so you know where they're going to go so you can kind of prep contract hold off as long as you can move early it, there's different things that you can do so and the island the benefit's going to land on everyone but it, piles in there right so you it's might like decide you get, at some point you got to throw your hands up and give up and give it to them because you're wasting so many guys because yeah. you're sending all it's these people so there. it's fun i i was surprised by it because for whatever reason the art kind of threw me and i was like eh, take it or leave it i don't know why because hmm. i i don't know it kind of had a greek druidish kind of look to it and i was like oh that's kind of cool but no it i don't know the art's not nearly as striking as some of the other games for whatever reason. So this one but is my number really 11. Fun. Makes sense. All right. So we, have, we can exit that one. We can well. eliminate things. All right. So my number What's eight. What's number eight? I don't know. What is my number eight? My number eight is... Let's see. Oh. In the year of the dragon. So, made notes. Is this a dragon year? This is the this is one of the angry mean felds. Yes, yes. So there, this one and one other that I might mention later, uh, are are the what we I consider the angry feld because it's basically you're trying to the majority of the time you're just trying to avoid penalties and bad things happening. You're not really you're not you talking about this now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not really trying to 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 get the most of something. It's trying to avoid bad events, avoiding your your little buildings crumbling and it's just all kinds oh of bad gosh, things. Oh my gosh, those buildings, yes. These are cool though. I gotta show these off. So, these are kind of neat. There's a series of 12 events. The first couple are nice, okay. nothing happens, but then the, the bad things start happening over and over and it gets worse and worse and all kinds of bad things happen. And the, the, the majority of your time is to prepare for those events and avoid penalties while at the same time trying to progress your engine and building up your buildings and getting people in your buildings and things like that. Yeah. If you ever have a building that's unoccupied at the end of a round, part of it crumbles, it decays, it is just, it's kind of mean because the first time we played it, it was just, our entire focus was trying to avoid Survive. survival, right? Survival. Well, see in here, the little pieces for your buildings that go above your cards and they stack. See, they're cute. They're very cute. But Until they, decay. they don't last. Yeah. yeah. You have to have a person in your building at the end of the round or they, uh, the building crumbles. Yeah. So. I liked this one, but at the same time, yeah, I loved the theme and I loved the art and I liked a lot of it, but I felt like the whole time I was putting out fires. This is a put out fires game to me. Yeah, but... It wasn't that uh, it was, it was our, so uh, mean as it was just, I have to prevent catastrophe after catastrophe. It wasn't. I didn't feel like I was building up, but 
building to brace myself for impact. Is well, like that's more the whole thing, yeah, is to, to, to protect yourself and try at the same time to advance a little yeah. bit, right? You're not you're not like, I'm going to do nothing but advance. you got to kind of balance between pr- protecting yourself, yourself yeah. from bad things yeah. and progressing. Or you can go, well, I'm just going to eat some of this bad stuff to make this big progression uh, yeah. in the game. So it's really, it's really a, a balancing act between those two things. And a yeah. lot of those games have that, but this may be the, the, the meanest of them. There's several of those games that have things like, if you don't do this one thing over here, you're going to get penalties, right? Yeah. So you got to decide, okay, I'm going to take care of that and play the game, but it's much more minor, right? You have yeah. like one little thing you need to worry about. This one is events and building crumbling and people <laughs> dying. What and isn't going crazy? It's crazy. Game. Yeah, and wasn't there... We didn't have player attack cards, did we? I can't, I'm trying to remember. I don't think so, no. I don't think, okay. I don't think that. There's no, there's no time to if attack. If so, we didn't have any time to attack each other. It was just that particular game. But yeah, I just yeah, I just remember that there was so much. You can kind of snipe cards, I think, from each other. But that's yeah, no, that, that's the that's, whole thing is drafting the cards. It's, yeah, it's, that, that part can be mean, too, because yeah. you can just be like, oh, you needed that? Yoink! Look over here. But, I mean, at this point, you're so busy surviving. I didn't, If you stole stuff from me, I... Whatever. <laughs> so, my no, so my notes for this one is hand management, events, bad things happen. Bad things happen. That's, what you, <laughs> that's awesome. That's my notes. That's my, that's, my, my high-powered notes. That's awesome. This is one that I honestly want to play again before I weigh too much on it. But, yeah, it's, it's not in my top ten because it's... Um, I don't know. Again, I think it's more I my like, style. I think it's more my style of game than your it style. It is, of game. and it's not the meanness that bothers me. It's just that I felt the entire time like I was always behind. I never. Well, that's the feeling. I think that's the feeling he's trying to convey. Yeah, because right? it was a siege, basically. Right. Like, but no, I, I totally get that. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't feel the siege. <laughs> so, All right, what's your number seven? My number seven is the is another mean feld. It is a Viking Feld. In fact, we did a we did Blender on this, right? Didn't we do a board game Blender segment on? I think so. Yes. At some point, I th- I'm pretty sure we did. Uh, yeah, it was like mean games or something that make you angry or something. And I think it's a. This is a reprint of one of the games that I mentioned that we don't have. Oh, okay. I want to say it's the the Spitter Stod. Spe- the Spitter Stod. What? The Speaker Stod. I think that's a reprint. It's a reprint of one of his earlier games. But anyway. Spitter. What? <laughs> anyway. Get we've gone from spitting to Jorvik. Okay. Much easier to pronounce. <laughs> but anyway, this one is really great. And I... Again, this is another one of those Feld games where, yes, he's got a lot going on. But the main mechanism that he employs is different. And so it changes the way the game is going. So the theme's kind of cool. Yeah, and it, got is, different it is. Art. That game. Yeah. It is? Mm-hmm. Okay. Look at you. And this one's all about bidding. And you only have a certain amount that you can bid. And the goal is to basically outbid each other. And it's great because Hunter may put down a meeple. Okay, so now that thing costs one. It's going to cost him one. But if I go and set a meeple down behind it, now that thing costs two for him or I get to go for it. Right. And so he still gets first dibs on it, but now he's got to pay two. Or he can come back in again and pay, but now he's going to pay three. I, it's just, and what's fun is there's two different levels to that. There's one where we're fighting over it, and then there's a level at the top that you're doing bids. But if you take that, you claim it. There's only one person that can go after those. The problem is, if another person goes after another card, then all of them at the top cost two. So it's really fun when you're like, oh, my opponent only has one coin left. (laughs) I'm going to put another one up there. I'm not going to buy it, but I'm going to make his cost two. So now he can't get it either. Right. So it's really mean. But we had a lot of fun with it. In fact, I think that's the first time we really didn't play a field game as much as we were trying to make sure that no one got the card they wanted every yeah, round. It was, it was just, just like, it, oh, you wanted that? Oh, I'm putting my meeple down. Yeah, by the second it was like a round, stare down. It, was hate. it was all just hate. It was hilarious. We were laughing. It was like, oh, how much did you want to pay for that again? It was just a mess. I'm not even sure who won that one <laughs> at that point. But yeah, I, really, I really enjoyed the, the game. I enjoyed the auction system. I just think, I just want a little more meat. It's, there's not a lot of meat to it. All it is is getting resources and basically fight, fight. and basically filling contracts, right? And yeah. it's just I just want I need something else. 
It's too light. That's what he just said. I need said. a little something on the side where you're doing a run, rondel or something. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but Yorvik is my number 12. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. No, that makes sense. But yeah, I just, I like it because it's different. Again, you'll notice that mine kind of, they don't tend to be the same one types in a row. I like the, the fact that he employs different stuff in it. And I, again, the art appeals to me too. So, there you go. Yep. I so like it, but not as much as you. Yep. It's mean. It is mean. I do like some mean. I don't like. I don't. I don't necessarily dislike no, the meanness. Don't. I just think I need a little more. You needed more to it. Yeah, it's too light for you. And but don't think that of that as being a light felt game either. It was is it on the lighter side, but it's definitely solidly in a medium. Yeah, it's a middle of the game. road for. Well, I think it's on the lighter end. For felt. For felt. Yes. But as a for, game yes. overall, no, it is not light. All right. So, so my number seven. Let's see what it is. What is it? What is it? Do tell. I suspect it's another mean Feld game. I was going to say, I bet it's a Feld game. Hey, good job. My number seven is... Oh! Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Another mean Feld game. Yeah, it is kind of mean, I guess. Now that you said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, plagues. Plagues are mean, people. So, this is another... Um, Feld game? Feld game. <laughs> this one is more of a... I guess your action selection kind of thing. You basically have your own little section of the city that you're trying to put influence in. And depending on where you put the influence, you get better and better at different things. Like if you put influence in banking, you get, you, you're better at making money. Mm -hmm. You put influence in another area, you may be better at this. Like you put, I think it's one of them is like the stables or something like that. And mm -hmm. it may, makes your carriage move faster. And, and when you pick to, when you pick to influence an area, you're choosing not to influence other areas um, because you only have so much to go around, right? So it's a decision, do I get kind of good at a lot of things? Do I get really good at a couple of things? Um, but one of my favorite things is there's a little carriage that you move around all over the city, including the other players' areas. You can't really influence other players' areas. Yeah. But you can drive your little carriage around, and you pick up messages, and the messages are little uh, kind of bonuses that you get. So there's another level do do I spend some of my actions to move my carriage around to get those those bonuses meanwhile rats are plaguing the city <laughs> yeah this is, this, is the, <laughs> this is the best part is so, so, so every every round you have a certain number of rats levels of rats or numbers of rats however you want to look at it, that are going to attack your city and there's ways to defend against them so if you put influence in the hospital you're better at defending against that yeah there's different things you can do to avoid that and again if you neglect that then you're going to get negative points and there's a plague track that goes up based on how many rats basically get through your defenses so yeah let's say if there's five coming in your hospital blocks two and this other thing blocks one you're gonna get two points uh, on your plague track and if your plague track ever maximizes it is bad news bears it yeah is, it is a big penalty if you ever let your the rat the plague track go all the way to the maximum. So, um, so there's a lot of things to shuffle, but my, my boils down to my favorite part is that decision of what am I going to do? And it seems like yeah. I want to do something every time. Like I want to do, let's see what happens if I be the money guy and I have lots of money. What do I, what, what happens if I make my carriage go all over the city and make you get a really fast movement? Of Which the I carriage. did that. That was pretty fun. And, and it's just, it just, it's just a lot of neat decision makings. And again, it's that balance again of, how much do I put towards advancing my cause, and how much do I put towards defending against bad stuff? So, yeah, um, this one's not. I don't think is as punitive as in Near the Dragon, oh, but no. it is definitely on the, the meaner side. The rats, yeah, can be. Yeah, it's rough and it's easy to lose things. Um, I think this is another one where it's really good to kind of sprawl a little bit, at least to cover. I don't know. To me, I, I like to kind of hedge my bet sometimes because something just blasts me away. Then you got to have recovery. But maybe I'm just a big chicken, too. I like the theme for this one, too, because I think it fits what you're doing. You've got the, the that time frame. You know, you, yeah, rats are a problem, you know. No. And you're, these people are vying for influence and stuff. And, they're of course, they're traveling around in their fancy carriages. And I don't know. I just I thought that one was pretty fun for theme. Yeah, and one other thing I like about it, just to kind of show you the board on the back, is each player area... They yeah. all connect up and are, form a big map. So yeah, red, the red, red has it's their the section, city. green has their section, and you can drive your little carriage all over the map, but you can't influence the other person's areas. So Yeah, it's pretty cool. You have I your own like player that. board, but you can drive your little carriage around their player board. It's kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if this is coming later or not, so I'll leave it right there. Okay. All right, that's my number seven, uh, Notre Dame. Uh, 
the last two games I did, the the Notre Dame and uh, in the Year of the Dragon, yes, are brand new tenth anniversary reprints. So oh, these, yeah. these are That's available. Right. They're not out of print. You can get these yeah, games. Yeah, you can get those now. So yeah, they yeah. were out of print, but they are no longer. But they're back. They're back. Yeah. yeah. So just, we're good. Just this year. So get them now while they're hot. <laughs> All, right. All right. My number six. I'm bouncing back to a light filled. As again, in context, a light filled, not a light game, and that is Bruges. Wow, six. He's all about these cities. That's interesting. <laughs> but um, I think he's more historical. But in he is. He does. He does a lot of historical themes, and I love that. Um, yeah, they're not super heavy themes, but he takes them and plays it with them, and I and it's all in context, right? So this one's great too because you've got Bruges, and it's. Uh, you're trying to like get the support of the population in this one and you're trying to build the city I don't know this maps kind of small you may not be able to see it but around the outside you've got these little you can build this it's just canals. a wall right oh no these are the canals. canals that's right canals I always call them walls they look like walls to me but they're the canals and you can also build up the um, where is it the buildings and stuff in there yeah. but the buildings the cards kind of come into play with that and what's great about this one, and what I love so much about this one, is the card play. Because this, oh my gosh, the cards are multi-purpose. And boy, are they multi-purpose. Yeah. It is, this is really dangerous for me to AP on because I'm like, ooh, all the choices, all the cool things you can do with one card. And you have to pick one thing that you can do with them. And, or you can put them down and build them, or you could do nothing with them and to get a coin. And sometimes that just makes you cringe because you're looking at all the good stuff and you're like, I really need the money for it. And turn in this great card yeah i don't think i've ever Love seen it. cards that have so many it was like seven seven different uses i think that you can use them seven different yeah. ways i think it's seven different ways yeah anyway there yeah lots of different ways and this is one of those games that have uh the the thing that's kind of on the side you got to kind of watch for because you have yeah. like uh diseases or something different kinds of diseases happening and if you get a certain too many of one kind of disease you have an outbreak in your city and bad things happen uh, so you got to kind of decide. You can use your cards, like you use a red card to cure the red disease. Or, yeah. Or you can use the red card to build a red building, or you use the red card to do this, or the red card to do all these different things. So. That's wonderful. My number six is Bruges. What? Are you serious? <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> that's so cool. So. Scary. Actually. My favorite thing about this is the dice. Uh, I love dice the, boob. I love the dice because it's it's one of those games where. Um, Everyone uses the same dice. Yeah, so actually, that's if you cool. get if you get a bad roll, then too uh, bad we all uh, do. <laughs> everybody gets a bad roll if yeah. you get a good. But it could be that you really want yellow to roll good and it rolls bad. So you can the dice does affect you because if you're like, oh, I really need to build this yellow building, and then the <laughs> yellow rolls crappy, then you're then you may not you're be done. out of luck. Um, at the same time, there's a kind of a tug of war. I don't know if it's a tug of war or a race or whatever you want to call it between the players to get most. Oh, prestige. those canals. To get, the, no, to get the prestige. Oh, the prestige. Yes. Yeah, and. Uh, you got to keep up with that, and it's one. Of, it's one of those games where you have a lot of, you have a lot of decisions to make. Do I want to build canals? Do I want to? Do I got diseases happen. I need to focus in on that. Do I want to build lots of buildings? Do I want to work on the the prestige and run away with that track? What do I want to do? Every game you can. What I like about doing is I'm, I'm not the type to go. Okay, I think this is the winning way to play. So I'm going to play that every single time. Every time I go into a game, I kind of go. Hey, maybe I'll try canals this time. It kind of right? depends on what you've got when you start, too, right? Because right, yeah. it changes up because of that. So you're kind of, again, you have to think on your feet, and you're right. You could doggedly stick to one thing, but. Yeah, but you may not get the cards you need, right? No, it's not going to Because it's, help it's you. kind of a random, random draw of the cards. Yeah, absolutely. And I, yeah, I just, I love the fact that this is another one of those that is surprisingly easy to learn because once you just learn what the cards do, okay, you know how to play. But there's so many decisions you can do so many things with right. them. It's a really deep game. So this is a great one. Like if you want to start playing a Feld game, I think this would be another good one to start with because but the, yeah, this it's, is, well, no, it's, it's pretty easy to learn. It's just, you, you need to be able to be comfortable at that point where you do have to... This absorb is, a lot of info. I up think front. this is one of the heavier games. You what, think so? The mid to heavy. I don't I, think so. I, I think it's middle of the pack. I think it's heavier than like if castles, you're good castles at, and burgundy. I think it's heavier than that. 
Really? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Did, well, did, if you're no, able no, no, to no. read off cards and read abilities and go with it, then I think you'll pick this game up easily. Yeah, but the, 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 having have... all those uses, you're right. The, you can, but you can AP on those uses. Like, okay, do I do this for money? Do I, do, I mean, there's a lot to, you can, lot to think but, about. Yeah, so set aside a little extra time for your first game. But I think it was easier to pick up. But I like to play card games where there's a lot of card text and individual things. So yeah. if you play stuff like That's that, true. you'll, you'll pick that up. Very quickly, because you don't have to be told every little thing. You can read that on the fly and go, okay, I got this. Yep. So. Yep, I agree with that. Bruges. Yeah, if you like uh, cards with lots of things going on with them, then this is yep. definitely the game for you. Yep. But it's it's awesome, and I like, again, that he's got the theme, and he talks, you know, he deals with the period, the time period. You're basically trying to protect that city for all it's worth. You're trying to build up your canals. You're trying to build up the, the economy. You're trying to fight off disease. It's... The theme is there. People either recognize it or don't. It's one of those, again, I think Feld has that where you can get lost in the mechanisms or you can absorb it all and just kind of enjoy it. It yeah. depends on the person. Yeah, yeah. So. Yep, yep. All right. So, so we're, we're, we're... Oh, we're down to my number five All the way now. to your number five. It number seems like you're going five. like two in a row. Well, I know, well. it's funny. Quit copying me. <laughs> all right. Technically, I made my list before you. But so. I didn't... What? Oh, Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so my next game is one that we I would say is really another one that's fairly light and you can pick it up and we have made fun of the cover endless times countless times because it is the most boring looking cover ever and that's Castles of Burgundy do not judge this game by the cover because oh my gosh it will put you to sleep or creep you out or both um, but the game is completely different from what it looks like on the outside. But 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 what about that guy? Oh my gosh, you're such a nerd. Give me this. <laughs> what, what what is that guy doing? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for that. I, I couldn't I couldn't have walked back in time. Oh my number five is Castles of Burgundy. Are you kidding me? What is happening? I'm so close to jumping in the canal right now. Castles okay. of Burgundy. This one's fun because you've got you're building your own little kingdom. So. As opposed to some of the other stuff, you actually are going to end up with an end product that you've built up by the time you're done. So you've got the map, and the map is laid out, but you're going to be filling it up with specialty tiles for those areas. Like, you can raise chickens. Or cows. You can both. And you get bonuses based off of those. And you're going to be placing, you know, certain things, and if you can try to get these tiles and that. And I, oh gosh, if you finish an area of a certain type first, you're going to get some victory points for that, and... But you're building up your kingdom. You're trying to set it up and um, solidify it. So you got to build up the different areas, right? I I'd already talked about the animal husbandry and stuff, but you also need to build up, you know, the... Um, what are some of the names of the buildings now? All of a sudden, oh, mines. You need to do mines. There's shipping and trade. Um, oh, there's, like, the manor. You want to build up the manor. There's all these different things. And you can actually do some trades to get money and goods and things, too. There's just... it's. But once you learn what things do, all of, all of it's color-coded, and there's a lot of dice, and the dice in this are fun. I like the dice in this, don't you? Yeah, you usually, you almost always can get something good with your yeah. dice, and there's ways to manipulate the dice, so. Yeah. I like games where dice decide your actions, but you can decide to spend some resources to make them something yeah, else, it's, right? Yeah, it's dice mitigation, so there's kind of a fun play there where you're like, should I spend this now or save it later to try to snatch something I really, really want, or... Or snipe something that you really want. <laughs> but yeah, I oh, I love this one. The theme, I, um, Burgundy, um, the Loire Valley. Okay, so it's the 15th century princes from the Loire Valley. Again, the theme's not super heavy there, but it's, just a, it's, it's there. A, it's a and city it's, building game. It's a city builder game. And it's he's got the historical context there because he's, you know, he doesn't have airplanes. And, you know what I mean? It's It's... It's set in this time frame, and it the art matches and everything, and I really enjoy that. Yeah, this so. one's this one's really heavy point salad. This one's got a lot, yes. of, a lot of different things going on. You can <laughs> you can race to to fill up uh, areas of the same kind, like try to fill up all your fields or fill up all your your water area, and you get bonuses for being the first one to do that. And the quicker you do it, earlier in the game, you get more points. Yeah. Um, there is, like she said, trading. There's getting money. There's just a lot going on, and the the I love the dice, using the dice to select which tile you purchase, basically, and you can decide. Uh, the, the way it works is when you buy a tile, it goes into a queue, and then you have to take it out of the queue into the 
uh, into your play board. So you have to decide, okay, do I want to use dice to move it into the play board or I want to use dice to put it in the queue. If you keep too many in your queue, you may be something you really want, but your queue is full so you can't purchase anything else. Yeah. Um, it's just a really kind of an, an engine of, of, of fr from drafting to your queue to on the board and keeping track of what your opponent's doing for those races to try to get the first to get uh, basically fill up an area. So there's a lot going on, and it's it's a really cool game. It is. It's really fun. And it was our very first film. That's true. And I, and I suggest this for, personally, I suggest this for anyone's first film. Because I think it gives you a good taste of what he's about. That's true. It's kind of mid weightish of his games. Mm -hmm. um, it's got dice that people are familiar with. It's yep. got city building with a lot of gamers are familiar with that. Yep. Um, it's got a lot of things uh, that it's familiar, and it gives you... I think a really good taste of what his games are about. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And someone also was commenting on that Concordia is the only game that has a worse cover on the front. <laughs> and I would agree, because it's got that chick that's it like, here's some fruit or something. If it wasn't buried, I'd, I'd pull it out. Yeah, I was going to say, that one's... All right, that's our comparison. number five. Another our crossover. number five. This is scary. Interesting. Hey, now there's no excuse to not pull these games out, because I'll be like, hey, I know you like this as much as I do. <laughs> Exactly as much. Exactly as much. Scary. All right, what's your four? We're skipping to your four again. That's My three in a row, four. right? I guarantee... Is that three in a row? No, two in a row. That's, yeah, two in a row. All right. I guarantee that we are not crossed over on this one because I think you're going to cry a little. That's my guess. My guess is this is higher on his list. Yeah, I know what it is already. Yeah. I love Oracle of Delphi. So obviously this has a Greek theme to it, which I already like. And I like the Oracle part. And the I'll colors... the picture up in a second. Yeah. Oh, what, what just did, happened? Did, did, did. Oh, did I move it? Yeah, I got moved. Oh, hmm. sorry. My editing. bad. All right. So, anyway, I, this game is another one I think the art's pretty fun with it. And the the world has these weird tiles. We actually put them together. They're kind of honeycomb looking. And so each game's going to be different how you lay it out. Or it can be different every time. And you've got, instead of really a point salad... You've got an adventure salad in this yeah. one because you've got a, it's a race and you are checking off. You need to do a certain number of things. You need to go worship at this temple. You need to go kill this monster. You need to, and, and you, so you have these things you've got to do, but you have to do it before your opponent gets done with all of these things. So you're trying to find the, the most efficient routes possible to get to these places. And I, I don't know. There's something about this one. It's really good. And again, the art. Let me see if I can pull out one of the player mats. I really like the player boards for this one. Because it's got the the different... And this is the other thing that's neat, too, is you've got this... Is this another Mancala movement thing, right? Where you're Rondell. Picking, oh, no, this one's Rondell. I always get them backwards for some reason. But anyway, the, as you can see, the player mat's beautiful. And it's color-coded, and each thing has a different ability. And but it's Rondell, so you've got to pay attention constantly to what's coming up, and right. do you have enough resources there? And um, you've also, in the meantime, over here, you've got basically Olympus and the gods. And as you raise the influence for each god, each god has a special, really awesome superpower that they'll give you once you reach the top. So you're trying to build that up while you're accomplishing all these goals because getting these benefits help you get your goals much quicker, much more quickly, actually. And um, I just, I love it. It's it's much more simple to uh, pick up because of the way they did the color coding and everything. And it all matches up really nicely. Really, really stunning looking game and really fun. And I'm sure that Hunter will have more to talk about later with that. So I'll just leave that right here. I might have more to talk about later, maybe. It might be my number 13. Right. Lies. <laughs> All right. My number four is not the Oracle of Delphi. I knew it wasn't. It is, in fact... Is it? What is it? It is a game we don't own. It is Macau. <gasps> oh, Macau. Macau is awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, Macau is Mawau. It is Mawazing. Mm, um, uh, Mawazing. <laughs> what, what just... <laughs> Oh, wow. You took it and just anyway, stumbled down Macau the Anyway, Macau is awesome. I, I love this game uh, because multiple reasons. The main reason is I really like the accent selection in this game, right? Yes. Uh, oh, my gosh, that, yes. That makes the game for me because the way it works, which I had, had the game to show you, but basically you have a wheel 
that that rotates and each each round you rotate your little arrow it points to a different number and whatever cubes are in that on that number is those are the actions you get to take and the way you fuel your wheel is you, you we roll dice and then you can choose which dice you want so if let's say you roll a five a blue five you can say okay i want to take that so i'm gonna get five blue cubes which is really cool because that's a lot because the most you can get is six but I have to put it five turns ahead on the wheel. Yeah. So it's going to be five turns before, you see before that, I right? get to that, right? So you can build up really big turns and put lots of things on one turn, but then you're neglecting other turns where you may not even get to do anything if you don't put any cubes. So it's a choice to I want to put lots of, of big numbers and have really big turns, or do I want to kind of spread it out and do lower numbers so that I have a consistent number of actions so the oh, the action it. selection in that game is awesome um I, I really like that and you're using these actions to uh build b buildings in the city basically you, they'll give you uh cards that give you superpowers there's a limited number of superpowers you can get um but when you when you draft the cards you kind of put them to the side then you have to pay for the cards to put them in their thing and if you don't have any card that's left unpaid at the end of the game as a penalty Yep. At the same time, when you're doing this, is you're collecting goods, uh, resources, and you have a ship traveling around out in the, the ports over here, and when you go to port, you can, whatever that port, whatever goods that port wants, if you have those, you can pay those goods for victory points. So yep. there's a lot of things going on, but what really makes the game for me is that action selection. It's, yes, I, I don't think I've seen anything similar to that where where you can uh, build humongous turns or you get a little bit every once in a Zulkin while. Zulkin does that a little bit. Something like that, yeah. Maybe it does. Maybe, does. does. maybe it does. But I think that Macau does it better. And, yeah, this one's out of print. And when is it? Is it next year or two years from now that this is going to be coming I am praying the... that Ravensburger, or Ravensburger, however you say their name, uh, picks this up and does a 10th anniversary in 2019. Oh, so far away. <laughs> yes. I want this because, yeah, you said it's outrageously expensive, right? Because someone was selling it. it for a hundred bucks, and I was ready to click buy, and I stopped myself. So it's about a hundred bucks ish. Oof, used. Right now. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, used. It, 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 it's That's crazy. It's one of the better ones, I think. And we've only played it once because we don't have access to yeah, it. Yeah, it was at the um, Dallas Games Marathon. They have it in their library. And, oh, my goodness, I'm so glad they have it. I think this one, if this one was on our shelf, it would be uh, maybe a, a tick or two higher on the list just because of... Funny thing you should say that. You know why? Because it's your number three. It's my number three. <laughs> All he All right, said I and more. I, I love everything he said about that. It's the action selection that sets this one apart. Um, and it's just... It is so much fun because you really are thinking ahead. And I was surprised we really didn't do as much AP for this one and as I thought we would. Right. Because you're sitting there going, oh my gosh, if I get this now, again, I'm going to have to set this five turns ahead. But then it's like Christmas when five turns comes around. It's like, right. yeah, I just put all of these here. It was just amazing. So it's really fun. I enjoyed that game. And it's interesting how you can choose... I did very little traveling in that game. Yeah. It was very expensive to travel, and I want to try to play it differently next time and see if I can do more traveling, and if that was just how I was dealt, basically, that start or what. But it was interesting because the person, um, Robin, when he beat, it, Robin won that one, right? Because he, oh yeah, he played it all the time. Yeah. He was like pro at it. Yeah. He traveled all over the place. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how are you yeah, but not he wasting he resources? But he, no, he neglected he, other stuff, yeah. too. So, oh, and there's cool. one thing I didn't mention that another I, I keep remembering things about the game because we played it once a while ago. Yeah, it, it has basically the combination of cards that come out that you can purchase have uh, tell you how much it costs to buy victory points every turn. So yeah. you got to got to decide. You got to decide. Okay, do I want to do, do, do save money to buy victory yeah. points, or maybe you'll be cheaper next turn? And uh, I forgot about that. Yeah, you have that gamble every yeah. turn, and you're like. Mm. So you don't know do what I, the you, you do don't I, know what the no. you, you don't know how many victory points you're going to be able to buy, and you do not know how much they're going to cost until those cards come out. And without fail, Murphy's Law says you're going to pick the turn. <laughs> you're gonna yeah you're gonna pay pay six for three victory points. Next turn you pay four for five victory points. <laughs> and you're something. like why? Yeah, <laughs> Porque. Yeah, it was pretty. Yep, awesome. that's a good one. Awesome. All right, so we're to my number you're, three. You're number three. Ooh, Look I get to I get to go for once. You do <laughs> go for once. And this one's going to hurt you. I'll slap you. It better not be what I think it is. My number three... Oh, man. Is... Oh, oh. 
Trajan. It's in your top three. I'll let you leave. Trajan. Come here, Trajan. Trajan. This one, I think, this and Castles probably are the majority of people's favorite Feld game. I can see that. This and Castles. Which I'm kind of shocked Oracle is not more, too, because it's so dice. different. Dice. Oh, of, it's the dice of, thing? A lot of Feld people don't like dice. I can see that. So. I can totally see that. So Trajan is, you're the Roman Empire. You're doing all kind of cool Roman-y things. So you're out here conquering the barbarians. You're over here shipping goods. You're maybe setting up guilds. You're getting votes in the Senate. You're doing all kinds of Roman-y stuff. So, a lot of people say this is like six mini-games in one, and I can see that. Um, really, it's six different kind of mechanisms that are going on, and you decide which one you want to do the most in. And it's another one of those games that's kind of punitive, because the people want certain things every round. That's true. And if you don't give them their things, they get mad. So I make sure to never have that as an <laughs> issue, so I, I don't feel like the game's punitive, but I kill myself making sure of that. And then... Because we're going to talk about this a lot here in a little bit, but the one of my favorite things is I like I'm, I'm I guess I like gimmicks because um, I really <laughs> like the the Mancala uh, thing going on down here yeah. that decides what actions you take. Sure. Um, it's really cool because you pick up you pick up cubes and you're going around and you drop them one off, you know, Mancala style. But if you end up in a spot and you have the right combination of cubes, you can buy a little tile that gives yeah. you a benefit. So you're so trying to cool. get the cubes, I mean, the, the cubes, I think they're little hexagonal things, but anyway, cubes. So the... Cylinders. I think they're hexagon, hexagonal cylinder things. See? Look at that. So Math! Anyway, so if you, you're trying to design a, the move to where when you finish the turn, the last one you drop off pays for, gives you the cubes that you need to buy these items, because these, these things are yeah. valuable to get. So... Not only does it decide your actions that you're going to take, it decides whether you can buy that tile that's going to be on your yeah. board. So, just a lot so, going on. I, I, awesome. I like the traveling. Uh, there's tons of points you can get from from uh, merchandise, selling resources. There's just yep. a lot of things going on in this game, and I enjoy. Uh, it's one of those games, like like I said, it's mini games, but I enjoy all the mini games, all the little things you do. I, I enjoy doing them, so it's yeah. that's why it's one of my favorites. Yep. It's good stuff. And we'll hear lots more about it soon. Talk about lots. We'll see. All right. You're going to geek out on the Roman stuff. I, it's going to happen. I don't happen. know what you're talking about. All right, so what's your number two? My number two is a monster-sized game because Queen made it and they're crazy about their boxes. That is Amerigo. This one was an out-of-left-field surprise for me. Look at this beast of a box, though. And as you can hear it, there's room. It's a Queen game. It's a Queen game, so they're like, big box. So, yeah, there's lots of empty space. This game has a mechanism. Before that you go any I... further, it's my number two. Nerd. <laughs> All right, now that's awesome. That's awesome. And th the reason is probably the same reason. Again, this it's is the, the gimmick. gimmick. It's thing. the gimmick. You have a cube tower. Look at this. This thing, thing is so fun. You have a cube Unless tower. Unless you have small children that are curious about it, and then it becomes a nightmare to play this game. Cube tower. But <laughs> that's play. another story. Talk about the game. I'll play with the cube tower. So the game is a minute ago. In Again, Amergo Vespucci. We're talking <laughs> historical context here. So, of course, you're going around and you're exploring new civilizations and new life. Anyway, not Star Trek, though. But you've got these different... And again, this is another one where the map's going to be different every mm -hmm. game because you're placing out these tiles and they all connect and make different shaped islands or continents if a lot of them connect up. It's really fun, though, because on these... And it's probably kind of hard to see, but there's little anchors... This is where you can go to port and build a little house. And then you've got resources. And once you start building, you've got your little people, of course, and you get your own player color and all this stuff. But you've got these pieces that you get. And you purchase them using these magical things. Okay? And you're basically doing a... Um, Almost like Tetrising these pieces that you're buying to cover as much of the land as possible because you get benefits and victory points, of course, for doing this, right? You're settling and exploring these areas. What's fun about bringing the gimmick into play is this little tower. So, I don't know, I'll probably tell you how the turns go here in a second, but what I love best about this is you're going to put in, you say you have your turn, and you're going to pick all the yellow cubes. It's the yellow turn. And you put it in here. What comes out the bottom 
no matter what, is what you have as options for what you're going to do that turn. Right. So if you and have, how powerful your action is. And how turn. powerful. So if I put four in and only three yellows came back out, so I if I choose the yellow action, which pretty much is our only option at this point, unless you have some special ability, you only have three. But I could drop the same four yellow cubes in next time and get the two yellow cubes, a brown and a black, and three greens. I mean, you right. never know what's going right. to come out because it's got different layers in here that may fall down at weird times. And you can choose, oh, you know what? This turn is supposed to be yellow's turn, but I really want to do the brown ability. And there's a cube there. Even if it's only one, you can decide to use that instead. Right. So you get to choose. Right. And it's really fun. And some of the options, what were they? Do you remember what the actions are? Oh, uh, you can build, you can build, build. you can build, a, you have, you have, you're just playing the little uh, piece of Tetris pieces, yeah. right? You build the, build, basically build you're, your you're trying to get area control on the islands. And you're trying to fill oh, yeah, up islands. Oh, move your ship. That's right. And when right. you cover up uh, resources, you get the resources. And um, it's just, uh, it's just a really fun game. Yeah, and the little player mat, I forgot, this is what... Um, some of the cubes are is to help you move along that, like gaining yeah, the your resources. Yeah, the amount of gold you get, the amount of, gold, amount of guns you have. Because you need to have cannon. And um, these are just straight up the victory points and cards and, then, and stuff. And then the scoring is you get a certain number of points for each type oh, of Oh, and a multiplier. And then there's a multiplies. Yeah, because if you don't get a multiplier, you could potentially not get points for those at all. Right. Even if you've collected four of them, right. which would be a good amount, but if you didn't get the multiplier, it's it's pretty interesting. So there's a lot going on with this. But the main thing is that is moving around the map and mm -hmm. uh, doing the area control. And the the fun part about this, like she said, is this is great. You this never is... know what's going to happen. <laughs> we had it come out where you drop six things and one little stupid cube comes out, and you're like, really? Yeah. Really. I can't do anything with this. I don't this. know if I can show it on camera, but the little cube tower has... It's, it's cool because it has has little shelves. Let's see if I can get those. Yeah, it's kind of hard. You can kind of see There's it. There's little shelves all yeah. in there that collect the... <laughs> see, it collects them the rather cubes. well. Oh, no. So, so they land on the little, the little ledges that are in there, and each time you drop, you don't know what's going to come out. It's random. You can kind of judge, like... Because you can see on, on the on the the main board, you can see how many of each of the cubes are uh, not in the tower, right? So you can so if a lot of the green are missing uh, from the board, you know there's a lot of greens in that tower, so there's a potential for a lot of greens to come out. You can out. plan a little bit, right? Yeah. You can you, you can sort of, sort of guess and plan, but you don't want to plan too much because the cube tower loves to foil plans. Yeah, and yeah. that's part of the fun. Yep. So. It's yeah, blast. it's very, it's very just... gimmicky, but it's fun. It's just, it's just fun that every turn you just drop some cubes in. It's, it's fun. <laughs> and you never fun know what you're getting out. It's like to a do. total guess. I don't think we're going to be able to put this one up, so we'll put it to the side. Oh, well, I was going. Oh, oh yeah. You took out the... Oh, look at you. Okay, fine. I can put this up while we're talking. <laughs> so was that your number two? That was my number two as well. We... Good heavens! So so hand me that one and we'll make uh, someone sad because they said they're gonna they just bought Aquasphere so. Well yeah but it's a personal preference thing. Yeah this one this one uh, just to talk about it I guess since we're putting it away. This will be our honorable mention because we the talked games about every out. other game but this one. Yeah. So this one the only one that didn't make either one of our lists. I really like this game but I think that Rebecca doesn't like it and that bleeds off onto me because you notice a lot of the ones we like we share the like of mm. i think i would really enjoy this one but it just doesn't float your boat i don't think yeah oh and i'll, I'll be willing to play it again i think for whatever reason i enjoy the mechanisms in this game but the theme to me i'm just like if i don't know why i couldn't even tell you why that so, is. so basically you're you're, you're an undersea uh, laboratory and you're doing you're fighting off aquapod guys that are attacking you and you're trying to do different things uh but you have little robot workers that go around, and basically when you go to an area, you, they queue up, and the the queue basically decides who gets to take actions in that area. And it's really it's really interesting, and the battling, the creatures give you victory points. There's just lots of different things going on. But um, this is like you said, like you said, the the theme, the theme. The only thing that makes it thematic to me is that you're fighting those little squid guys. Yeah. But other than that, it's just kind of a worker placement area control kind of game. I felt, I got a cube pushy vibe from this one, and I think it's because I couldn't get into the theme. But again, this is the only one where he really didn't take a, well, no, Isla doesn't have like a historical bent to it either now that I think about mm -hmm. it. Um, Exploring jungles. Yeah, and for whatever reason, this one, which is weird because this normally would be a theme I would 
get behind, I would think. I, th- I, th- I think if I played this game with someone who enjoyed it, I would I would love it more. I just, I just oh how rude! No, I'm just saying. I, 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 it's it's evident that this isn't one of your favorites. Yeah, no, I can see that. But again, I, I do want to give it some another shot. I, it's not like I'm like I'll never play this game again. But I mean, if I was to pick one, obviously I have a bunch more that I would pick first. But the mechanisms in this are really cool because the movement, it might be too, maybe it just doesn't Programming click the as robots well. and stuff. Yeah, and you're programming your movement and stuff and planning out. You need to plan pretty far ahead in this game, I think. But I guess another reason successful. why you don't like it that is the, pro- be, the programming part of it. Maybe I don't, but I usually like programming. I don't know, it's weird. It's just for whatever reason, it just didn't quite fire off on the things that normally I like with it. Maybe it's just the combination of all of them. But yeah, it, the programming's cool. I mean, the concept. It's yeah. just maybe, maybe. All right, again. so without further ado. That's Aquasphere. Our number ones. Yeah, everyone knows. Everyone They're knows. Both still We've ranted and raved about these games enough that if you watch our channel at all, you already know what our number ones are. That, and we've probably given it away like four times in this video, too. Let's scroll way back to find the number. Obviously. Obviously. I like Trajan. And I think one of the reasons, again. I got behind the theme right away because I'm like, ooh, historical you context. To, if you're gonna show the box, you have to. Oh, sorry, sh- sorry. Just put it I'm to trying the not side. to mess with you guys' mind. <laughs> Whoa, Trajan, it's trippy. No, <laughs> um, we kind of joked that for this one, Stefan Feld's like going through his junk drawer and he's like, hmm, I've got a whole bunch of mechanisms in here. Let's see, <laughs> dump, dump, dump. Yeah, we'll take these six and go with it. No, it's the platypus but- of the Feld games. <laughs> <laughs> let's give it a like, beak and let's give it some eggs and give it some fur. <laughs> yeah, but he made it all fit within the historical context because again, you've got the traveling. You're taking over. You're, you're managing an empire, so you've got the the area control and traveling thing going on, and you get certain benefits from those provinces that you control. So you're moving around and doing that. And like you said, you're talking about building up your guilds and stuff. So you're trying to work your economy and your doing trade and you're gaining approval in the senate and um keeping the people happy it just it has a little bit of everything and it feels like that insane juggling act that an emperor would have to do to cover a vast empire i don't know i really got into it i thought it was cool but the you're right the action selection like how you're going to plan out your turn is amazing. I think that's one of my favorite parts of it, is moving those little hexagonal container thingies around and, mm-hmm. and trying to plot. And again, it's color-coded. It's really nice. So once you um, learn how to uh, what what does what, it's all color-coded. So you're like, okay, orange? Okay, I'm doing that. You know, it's really easy to keep track of it that way, and I really like that. The art's pretty. It's not overwhelmingly so. It's not like, oh my gosh, this game, the art, no. But it has kind of a little simple, dignified Roman flair to it. I like it. So, yes, of course, I nerded out on Trajan. There you go. Any more to add to that? No, no. I, <laughs> I, I mean, I really do like it. Like I said, I like that there's so many... A lot of people complain there's too much going on, but that's what I like. It's like, mm-hmm. it's like oh, well, she's beating him in the Senate. I better go do something else and, and work on that. Or you know, There's just many different choices. Yeah, it's fun. And, and the gimmicks. Gimmicks work for me. Well, and I like the fact that two, for the two to four players at the bottom, and it's probably pretty hard for you guys to see, but they have different little tracks here. And if you're playing two-player, your track, your time track is smaller, so you're spending more things to do your um, the tur- the, the, actions, your turns and the stuff. Turn, the rounds the turns, go quicker. The rounds go quicker. So you have three players, you have a little bit longer round, but you're also have more players yeah, and stuff, it right? It, it, it balances everything out so that when you're playing, you're not going to play a different... It's not going to feel completely different playing two-player versus four-player. They evened everything out. And you can and decide you can decide you want to take short, uh, short ones that don't take many of those spaces and, and extend yeah. the round or do you want to do bigger actions that make the rounds go faster so and that's kind of fun to play with too is like oh you know what i'm doing really well but he doesn't have the resources to feed his people yet so i'm gonna make the round go faster right. you know you can really mess with people with that and it's just it's really fun there's a lot of manipulation going on with it and there's just so many things going on i could let him completely run away with traveling up in the provinces and maybe still win the game if i take control of other things that give me a lot of points there's a lot there's not a clear path to victory in this. It's another perfect example of some point salad craziness going on. Yep, yep. So. There is a game that's better. Yeah. No. And it's the last man standing. It is the Oracle is of Delphi. It's a good game. Just not as good as Trajan. 
It is an amazing game. <laughs> Let me tell you why this game is amazing. First, I'm, first I'm going to tell you the story the first time I played this. Oh my gosh. So I was at BGGCon wandering around. Without me. Without her. And I walked by and I'm like... Just like that? It was just like that. <laughs> like... I thought this was coming out of Essen. Was it? I mean, I, I thought I didn't think it was going to be a BGG. It came out of Essen. I didn't think they had a copy of it. And I'm like, and I, I sat down. And I demanded to play this game, and, and I've been hooked ever since. This game. What I really like about it is multiple things, but the main thing I like about it is a lot of a lot of the Feld games is a steady burn. You just do it. You're doing things. You're doing things. You're doing yeah, okay. things. You're doing okay. things. You're doing I things. Sure. Delphi is like you kind of start off slow, and then it's a frantic like. Race to the finish. Every every game I've it played of up. this, it has been last turn. How can I m- most efficiently finish the last two things? He's got one thing left to do, but he's got really far to travel. I got two things to do. How can I get it done in time? And it just it just it just it arcs up, and at the end, it's just a frenzy of it trying is, to figure out what to do. Especially if you're pretty evenly matched, we usually are duking it out for that last. Um, check on our to-do list basically at the same time so it's a fight it's fun and it's a it's the kind of puzzle i like i don't particularly like puzzle games but this is the kind of puzzle i like because it's it's finding an efficiency it's not solving a riddle or trying to figure it's trying to figure okay i'm at this spot on the map what's around me that's in range of my movement where i can accomplish not maybe maybe two things this turn instead of one thing right to yeah. combo it off i'm going to go and, and fight a monster but right next to it is a temple i need to visit right so i need to get the right combination of dice to go fight the monster and have the dice to get to the temple how do i work that out and there's ways to manipulate the dice i don't know if she went into it but the mm, i didn't really talk about moving the dice i didn't the, 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 the when you, you roll your dice and that tells you what actions you get to take this turn color-coded. it's all color coded so like say if i get a blue die i can move my ship from uh, wherever i am to a blue square that's in range and then i can if i need to pick up a blue cube off an island to to transport it to do like a pick up and deliver i need to have like a, a red cube to get next to the island i mean a red die to get next to the island and a blue die to pick up the cube and then maybe a purple die to move to where i need to go and you have ways to manipulate those dice. It's like, okay, I need to change this dice to a blue die. It's really building efficiencies and figuring out in the area of the board you're in, what's the most you could possibly do. Or maybe I need to abandon that area. And yeah, just, just bail. There's a more efficient place yeah. on the other side where I can accomplish two or three things close together. And you, like she said, you have 12 uh, t- uh, deeds or t- tasks or whatever you have oh, to do. Oh, I like that. It's 12 labors. Labors. 12, 12 labors you have to do to <laughs> appease Zeus. And... You can do them in any order you want. You That's know, the cool part there too. There is no order to how any you order. do them, and uh, everyone has basically the same twelve labors to do. Uh, but she may like focus in and do the, the temples and or the pick up and deliver, and I may be over here fighting monsters. It's a completely different order, so it's not like we're kind of following lockstep on what we're doing. Now she's doing something completely different from what I'm doing, and different, but we're doing the same tasks. So I heard that there's going to be an expansion and they're going to have an extra labor, and you have to solve a riddle at a at a, a temple before you can continue on. Would you like it if it was a puzzle game? No. <laughs> hey, I've, I've I've decided. They combined Oracle I've with de- Exit. I, I've decided. It's Hunter's favorite I, game. I, I've, I've come to terms with it. I've always <laughs> I've always had this belief that I like puzzle games. I've come to terms with it. I despise puzzle games. It's official. I hate puzzle games. Really? I, I hate, never would have guessed that. I hate puzzle games. But don't invite him to finding puzzle efficiencies games. to me is a good kind of puzzle, and I like doing that. And this one has it's a it. dangerous line. This there. one has it in spades. Yeah, that's fine. And it has it has an exploration level to it because uh, there's you have to go explore the islands to find uh, the places where you need to build your your little shrines. Yeah. And if there's okay. an exploration, you may find a place and discover something that helps her. And you're like, oh, man, I didn't mean to find your, your place for you. But you get a benefit for doing that. So it's just, it's just, it's an amazing game. My number one. No one would ever guess you like that game. <laughs> and I never put the name up. <laughs> wow. Way to do a complete disservice to Delphi. It must be secretly... Your second favorite game because you like. I'll just I'll just leave it up to the entire out. Oh my like gosh! I always do. <laughs> That's funny. Oracle of Delphi and people in the chat called it. They 
I think oh, I, yeah, I'm I think sure I made did. it. They very, called that at the beginning. I think I made it very apparent that I really enjoy this game. This yeah, is, this you've is, ranted about that. This is several one times. of my favorite games. It's really cool too. It's one of those that has a nice visual appeal. It's got the bright colors and they've got. I, I don't know. I just like the way they color coded it. He's really good at um, simplifying some of the complicated mechanisms by doing something like color coding or matching images but keeping them simple the only exception i feel like for that is bora bora where they're just similar enough that you can get them confused but most of the time he's really good about making them different and he's good at multi-use because i just thought I didn't, yeah i mean they didn't things. really think i mean i i knew it but it, it, the same way that bruges has cards that have oh yeah that's with the dice and five stuff. different each one of the dice has multi-uses it can be used to influence gods it can be used to move your ship it can be used to pick mm -hmm. things up fight monsters it just it really depends on where you are on the map yeah no, it's and, cool. and i like the i like the the traveling around that's why i Amer amerigo and delphi i really like yeah, the ma fun. maps and traveling around the board and, and taking action it is based fun on if there's something about that and, and that's one of the reasons amerigo scored so high for me too is just it's great to go and take over this little plot of the land and yet put your little colored dude there and keep going. You know, it's it's pretty fun. So, hopefully you kind of get a little idea, if you haven't played Feld yet, what his games are about. Hopefully we didn't scare you off if you haven't played them before. Because, yeah, they, they are pretty in-depth. They will make you think and they can be brain burners. So if you're used to playing light games, this may be quite the jump for you. But if you play heavier games, you really should give it a try. I think you'll like the fact that he employs a lot of different mechanisms and he really, it just, it's great at just unlocking that whole puzzle solving ability and trying to plan ahead and managing your resources. And I really enjoy the different things that he does with those games. Yeah, I, th I think, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, everyone says that they're famous and I agree somewhat with that. Yep. But I think he makes the effort of doing research into the time periods and what's going on and, mm -hmm. and makes, like you said, in one, I don't remember which game it was, but he makes it appropriate, right? Yeah. The, the, yeah, like Notre Dame. And... He makes it, I mean, the plagues and the, and the, the, the attacks the, in near the dragon, the attacks and the events happen, or, yeah. or historical yeah. events that occurred. Um, you don't feel like, you know, that when I roll a dice and move my ship that I feel like I can't see captain or anything. It's not theme thematic that way, but the labors make sense. You're building temples and you're delivering yeah. goods and you're fighting, you know, mythical monsters. It's all and got stuff. that, that, that theme. Yeah. It's got the, you kind of dropped into that world a little bit. I mean, it, 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 it could, I mean, he could just easily said, pick up a green cube and, and take it over here and build this, this, you know, faceless building here. And you fight these, these creatures that, that have no you know meaning. I mean, you can, mm -hmm. you can make it truly themeless, but he makes a little bit of effort to, that, oh look, I'm fighting, you know, I'm fighting yeah. the, the Cyclops or whatever I'm doing. Yeah. I'm fighting a Minotaur or whatever. There's, there's at least there's, there's, he puts effort into layering on that theme to where you're, you're kind of feel at least that you're interacting with things that. Yeah, that, it's yeah, it's not. You could ignore it and get um, submerged just in the mechanisms and forget what you're doing with the game, but I don't know. I, for those of you that like theme and stuff, I think it's easier to try to keep with it. And, enjoy it for what it is so um okay so we're going to we're going to take some questions we are we're going to, i'm not going to scroll back so if you have any questions you ask that you really want us to answer okay. we'll be more than happy to answer them for a short while um we've we've gone over an hour so we're not going to stay, oh, yeah. stay, stay too long but the one question i saw is someone asked is aquasphere our least favorite felt my least favorite felt is la isla i would say aquasphere right now is my least favorite but again, maybe with some more plays and stuff, that might change. Yep. I, it, this it seems feels like a semi fluid list, in a way too, because gosh, you know, sometimes we'll go back like we for the longest time we almost forgot that Amerigo was part of our felds because we have to keep it on the top because it's such a big game, and we pulled it out again a couple months ago and we're like, oh my gosh, I forgot just how amazing this game yeah. is, you know. And some it, of our games that are on the top get forgotten. Yeah, they get a little forgotten, and it's sad because some of our very favorite games are sitting on that top row, so. So, a couple of questions. Uh, do we... <laughs> I see, Hunter, do you like puzzle games? <laughs> <clears throat> 
Oh dear. Why, why do you people troll him? <laughs> you just scared the cat. Oh, I thought you were gonna shoot it. Oh. That's how I feel about puzzle games. Wow. <laughs> we're not reselling that one, folks. You can't resell. I know. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> he enjoyed that way too much. Um. Can I can I start a new segment where you write back of the box description for games? I like telling the back of the box. It's like it's like a story. It's a little story to tell. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You scared the snot out of the cat when you did that, by the way. That was funny. <laughs> the cat went, like, flying out of here. Uh, Ethnos, uh, they're, they're talking about Ethnos. I, wa I want to play that, but that's, that's for me, it's a play before I buy a game because I've heard amazing things about it, and I've heard horrible things about oh, it. Oh, wow. So okay, so I, I don't, it's a divider. I don't want to... I don't want to... Uh, <laughs> jump into buying that one. I want really... But I do want to really want to try... Uh, try that game out. Okay. They're talking about how you snapped now because what? The, 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 what happened? Your, your puzzle game destruction just hit the screen. What happened? That I did, don't that know. Didn't, that, didn't, that didn't. That didn't happen. I don't know. I just feel bad for our cat. <laughs> I'm gonna have to take him to the vet for a heart attack. So Hunter holds box backs. <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> the Vanna White board gaming folks. <laughs> Right there. We, uh, so a couple of questions. Uh, Discovery. Uh, oh. I, I, I will not pay money to watch Star Trek. Sorry. So we'll wait till it comes out. So if, it ever, if it ever comes out free, then I'll be all over it. But. And the Orville. Oh my gosh, I want to see that too. That looks hysterical. It's like the Galaxy Quest yeah, series yeah. or mm -hmm. whatever. It's basically Galaxy Quest. That looks amazing too. Someday. Those two are on my eventually list we really don't watch a lot of we TV. don't watch tv we you know what's funny is the girls are so used to watching like dice tower and board game reviews and stuff and that's about we watch youtube stuff and um you you watch a show you started watching parks and rec oh yeah every once in a while i'll hit um um uh, netflix the streaming stuff but as far as like tv we don't even have cable anymore we got nope. rid of it a while we ago have we haven't cable. missed it haven't missed it so, yeah, we don't watch a lot. Next uh, question, did we save expansion boxes? No, we do not. If we can get the expansion in the original box, it, we... Except, we're going to find... Oh, we did. That's right. This is the cutest little expansion box ever. <laughs> that we had to keep it. We couldn't just throw it away. We're like... And it opened up, and all of our extra dice are in there now. It's so cute. And the girls are probably wondering no, where their we, dice are, if, but if no, typically we don't. If we can combine uh, expansions into the original game, we'll do that because we're we're out of shelf space. We're, we're to the point uh -oh. where it's Oops. it's like a new one comes in and one goes out at this point. I want to buy some more shelves. I don't know where I'm going to put them, but it's, oh, it, it's in. It's like one comes in, one goes out now. We're at that point. So. Yep. so if we can buy an expansion and combine it, that's that, that keeps us from kicking another game out. Don't mind me. I'm just knocking the figurines over behind me. So, there you go. Um, so, yes. Yes, we backed the Networks expansion. Yay! The Networks and expansion. And the little mini expansion that we missed getting. There's a mini expansion we missed getting? Mm -hmm. What is wrong with you? I didn't know about it. Oh, okay. I'll let you pass then. I thought you knew about it. So, before we go... We are out of top tens again. No, we're not. Oh, contrary. Well, well, we're out of the ones that we said we said. Oh, we that we said. Do, said oh, we yeah. do. I've got some more. So, if you have ideas for top tens, leave them in the comments down below or put them in the chat. I saw one in the, the next chat. I saw, I saw one in the chat that I think we should do. I Which one? The title. It's called the top ten vegetarian games. Games that need more meat. Oh, I would. I can definitely. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Good job, Dan. That's write that write that down. That's it's right good, there. I already wrote it down. Oh, that's a good. That's I saw a, it and I was like, "That's a good one." Because I that's my biggest complaint now. Because I, I there's a lot of light games that I really love. But I just wish there was some more to it. Just yeah. like I said with, uh, uh, which game did I say that? Meat needs more meat. Yeah, the one where I said I wish there was a little game on the side. Um, the one I liked and you didn't as much. I, I can't see him. When I see him, I know. <laughs> Bruce? Uh, Jorvik. 
It was Jorvik. Jorvik, yeah. I wish there was more to Jorvik, like maybe raiding or some, yeah, some, yeah. something a little more to yep. it. Yep. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that that's one. That's a good one. We're not backing Seventh Continent for a multiple reasons. One, we can't get our favorite big games to the table, so we're not going to be able to dedicate 20, 30, 40, 100 hours to a game. It's not happening. They're just, they're just, not any time in the near future, anyway. They're just not. It's not possible. I mean, I know you can play that in short bursts, but I think that's the type of game I'd want to sit down and play all day, and we don't ever get an all day to play game. So yeah, it looks like it's right up our alley, but it is puzzly and has riddles. That's the second. <laughs> that's the second reason why we're not. I'll just that banish in. you from the room, and I'll do that part. <laughs> I saw that. Where's the beef joke? We're showing your that's age. That's not a bad. If it wasn't, if it wasn't a uh, copyright thing, over that. Oh, that's so old. Surely we're past its copyright. Yeah, maybe. All right, so that's it, folks. So down in the comments, top ten fast food games. Bad for you, but you keep playing anyway. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that's kind of funny. I may have to write that down. We may have to play with that one. All right. So, as we're exiting. Tomorrow afternoon, our time anyway, the first Arcadia Quest campaign is going up. Oh, it is? Yes, uh -huh. it is. And then sometime this week, but definitely this weekend, I start recording my top 100. The list is locked in and made. We are ready to go. So we're going to start recording that this week. Hopefully the first episode, segment, episode, episode, will air next week. Cool. Oh, and, well... No, I won't Top say. ten box backs. Box backs. All right. I love box. I love, that's just how I describe games. Because that's what that, that I'm, I'm with uh, Tom Vassell on the fact that if oh, you if have, you can't see the board, if yeah. you have a crappy box back, you're 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 not trying to sell your game. Because if I pull a game off the shelf and I look at the back and it's just words or no pictures, no picture of the board, no picture of the components. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously, how, how you know? obviously nowadays you can go online and research that stuff, but. A lot of people that go into board game uh, stores, stores are, are just gonna... picking games off and go, oh, what's this? And if you have a box back that shows you what the game's like, you can go, oh, that's way too hard for me. Or, oh, that looks cool. The artwork looks cool. You have at least something to go with and not just buy our game. It's really cool on the back of the box. Yep, 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 yep. There you are. <laughs> and hopefully we may have a surprise soon, too. The girls are wanting to do something, so. Oh, yeah, we may do a, they're, a, they're spe like... a special... A special yes. uh, uh, younger showdown edition. Yes, soon maybe. So, all right, let's let's get out of here. Thank you all so much for joining us, and we will be sending you more goody goodness soon. Have a great evening, morning, or afternoon. Bye, folks. We'll see you soon.